everyone, I am Neri. Welcome to the Ozeki Camera SDK Video Guide Tutorial Part 9. In this chapter, we will create a simple project to connect a USB camera and an IP camera. And then we will learn how to stream their image to a website. This is the ninth video guide from our C-Sharp.net camera tutorial series, in which we present how to use Ozeki Camera SDK to develop different kind of camera solutions. This SDK is HomeWiv compliant, easy to use and effective. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced C-Sharp developer, you will certainly be able to implement the solution presented in this tutorial video if you use this camera at DK. This is gonna be a great video series, they contain short and practical code explanation. I hope you will enjoy it. In this video, the main steps are the following. First step, download the SDK from the website. Second step, create a WVPF solution in Visual Studio. Third step, implementing the camera viewer application. Fourth step, extend the application with streaming to website function. And finally, the fifth step, check the result and we try out our application. And let's start now with the step one. First of all, let's download the necessary SDK from the camera-sdk.com. Click on the download, then click on the link, then add a name, an email, and finally a reason why you need this SDK. Then click on the Auto button. Now you see the downloading link. Click on it and install it. How about the installation? You can find more information in the Quick Start section. After the installation, let's create a new WVPF solution project in the Visual Studio. Click on the new project and choose the WVPF and give a name. And select the folder where you want to save. When the project is exist, then we add the SDK to the references. We can add it where the installer put it. Now you can see the it in the reference list. Next step is to create the graphical user interface. We can do it in the XAML file. There we will need two buttons for USB camera connection and disconnection. And then we also need the same for the IP camera, but here we have to add three text boxes where we can add the connection data, like address of the camera, username, and password as well. And then the related buttons. Now we add the necessary event handlers for the connection and disconnection buttons. And finally we set the Windows property. After that we can deal with the control. 
Firstly, we add the essential namespaces, which are come from the Ozeki camera at Diki. Then, we add the necessary objects to display the image of the IP and USB camera, like Video Viewer VPF, Bitmap Source Provider, IP Camera, Web Camera, and the connector. In the constructor, we instantiate the above objects. Then we call a half function. We create this half function, which create and set the video viewer object and add it to the user interface. Now we establish the USB camera connection event handler. Here we create a web camera object and connect it to the bitmap source provider and then start the camera. Then we implement the USB camera disconnection where we stop the video viewer and the web camera. At IP camera for the connection we add the camera address, the username and the password. Then we can start the camera. The disconnection happens like at the USB camera. Now we come back to extend the user interface with two text boxes and two buttons. In the text boxes we add the server data, an IP address and the port number. In this case it will be the our IP address and the port number. With the start button we will start the server and with the stop button we will stop the server. For the two buttons we generate two event handlers. Now we add an essential namespace, the MGPEG streaming. After this, we declare two new fields to stream to website an MGPEG stream instance and an iVideo sender instance. After this, we have to modify the USB and IP connection. 
Here we add reference to the video sender. Now we can deal with the start button event handler. We instantiate the MGPX streamer with the IP address and the port number. Then connect it to the video sender to video channel of the streamer. Furthermore, we subscribe for two streamer events, for client connected and for client disconnected. Now we are ready to start the server. In the two event handler, our only job is to start and stop the streaming. Finally, in the event handler of the stop button, we stop the stream and disconnect the video sender and the video channel of the streamer. Now check the result. First let's try the USB camera. Then open the command prompt. Then with the ipconfig command we find out what is my IP address. That will be the IP address of the server. I transmit this address and port number and start the server. Then I have a short HTML file with an image tag where the source is the address of the server. Let's try it in the browser. And it works. Now I stop the server. and the streaming is stopped as in the browser seems. Now let's try with an IP camera. Add the necessary data. Then connect. Start the server. Refresh the page and it works too. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you want to learn more about further great solutions provided by Ozeki Camera SDK, then download the trial version from our website camerasdk.com and follow our tutorial videos. For more information, check out our website and if you have any questions, send us an email to info at camerasdk.com. In the next chapter, Peter will show how you can stream the image of the camera during an SIP video call. It's gonna be exciting. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video, bye.